Hello everyone, uh, this is Coach Oliver once again. It's the rest day of Vili Grand Prix 2022 in Berlin. And today we will feature one of the best games in round number three. It's played by Levon Aronian against uh, the young GM Vincent Kamer, Germany. This game was very instructive. Aronian showed his superior understanding of the game, uh, the occupation of the open file, the invasion of the seventh rank, and in the end, the pawn breakthrough. All right, let's go through the game. Aronian started with e4. Gamer went for the Karkran with c6. E4, E5, takes E5. Okay, this is the exchange preparation of the Karukan. C to E5, Bishop E3. The main point of Bishop E3 is not just developing the Bishop, but preventing that Bishop F5. Yes. One of the main problems in the Karukan and in the French is this light square Bishop on C8. Knight F6. Again, restricting the bishop on c8. Restricting the light square bishop. No square for the bishop to go g4. Bishop also prevents bishop f5. <coughs> knight into c6, knight f3. So with the pawn in h3, there's no pin. Yes. Black cannot use his light square bishop. Okay, an understandable knight b4. Taking away this bishop on d3. Knight into c3, a normal developing move there, Onion. g6, knight into e5, centralized knight. It's an outpost with the protection of the pawn. a6, cancels. Bishop g7, rook e1, centralizing the rook. Cancels. Bishop g5. With the rook on e1, with the bishop on g5, target is that e7 pawn. So that knight on f6 couldn't make a move. Knight takes d3. Okay, here's the interesting part. Okay, the first moment of the game. Okay, we have three pieces knight, pawn, and queen that can capture the knight on d3. Aronin went for c takes d3. He created a double pawn. But the compensation is that he gets the open C file. The pawn also protects the important central square. And the bishop couldn't develop on f5 because the e4 square is well protected. And why can the simple play g4 also to drive over the bishop? So queen b6 was played by Kamer. Double attack on d4, backing b2. Aronian was very calm here with knight f3. All right. He protects the pawn on d4, but the rook attacks the pawn on e7. So it's a discovered attack. Yeah. Here, d6 was played. Now let's take a look at queen takes b2. Is it possible to take? With queen takes b2, Aronian might, might go for knight e4, making queen on b2, rook on e7. If the queen protects the e7 pawn, there's rook e1, rook to queen. Queen goes back to d6, he wants to protect the e7 pawn, there's knight to d6, attacking the rook. And if let's say you put the rook on b8, queen b2, Developing the queen, look at this queen and rook, they're on the same line. Target now is bishop f4, skewer. And the white has a very big advantage, which is very close also to winning. Okay, so e6 was played in the game by Kamer. Runyon, of course, continued with knight a4. Again, one of the main problems in Haruka or the French is the slide square bishop on c8. Okay, where is it going to develop? 
into d6, then d2, that tree. White is threatening bishop f4, whereas it can also go for bishop a6. Depending on his taste, a5. Killed black was stopping b4. Probably he thought that with queen b2, b4 was going to be played with the protection of the queen. With ac1, the control of the open c file. Bishop on d7, now knight c5. Here, b6 was played. Okay, attacking the knight on c5. Aronin has this intermediate move on f4, hitting the queen d6, queen to e7. Okay. Now, why does a choice? This is a strong knight, and as I've said, this is a bad bishop. Seven. But what Aronian played here, this knight take seven, was reminiscent of the game by Petrosian of Fischer against Petrosian in 1971 in the candidates in Argentina. Okay, let's let's take a look at that game. All right, Fischer was white. Petrosian played bishop d7. And here also Fisher captured that bishop on d7. And he also has rook c1, control of the c file. After rook d6, rook on the seventh, right? Threatening rook to e7. Knight goes back to block it. Fisher went back to rook e2. g6, the king goes to f2. f4, king to f3. King into d3, the king walk. King into d2. Now double the rooks on the seventh rank. On d5, check first. Rook to d7. And then bishop c4. Here, the Trojan resigned. Okay, let's say, for example, the Trojan plays the move b3. Fisher has rook h7, threatening rook h8. Right? If the knight goes back to d6, there's bishop takes this. That's why the bishop is on c4. Because if you take, you check me. So again, here, the transformation of the advantage. Yeah? If, if you look at, if you go back, that knight on c5 was pretty strong, right? Strong outpost. Bishop is not so good on d7. But Fisher transforms the advantage. From the outpost to the open file, and later on the seventh rank, and went on to win the game. Okay, so let's go back to the pawn. Rook on the open file. It took the bishop on d7. Rook on the seventh rank. Quite similar to the Fisher idea. Rook to c8, to c1. Let's double the rooks. We have the reinforcement. And if rook, let's say rook captures, we have the replacement. Yeah. So rook ec1, queen d8 was played. We have the Alekhine's gun. Three major pieces on the open plan. Queen on to c2. Rook takes c7. Queen takes c7. 7. seven. Rook takes c7. Okay. Rook on the seventh rank. Rook d8. Rook to b7. King f8. Bishop e6 check. Queen e8. Knight into e5. Dominant position for Aronian. And then again, we, we can go back to. Alekhine also, yes. So with this knight on e with this knight on e5, he has a centralized knight. He also has a c file. It was a knight in wing two against Yates. Play rook c7, the bishop b5, play rook c5, rook to c6, rook protects e6, king f4, king helps, king g8, h5. After bishop f is g3, bishop a6, rook to f7, rook to c7, threatening a7, 
root g8, a to d7, threatening knight f6. King h8, still knight f6, because if you take, you mate. Here, the opponent plays rook f8, rook takes g7, without that knight's free, but the king goes to e5, eating the rook. And if you go back, it's going to be mate g7. We call it the blind swine mate. Checking with the two rooks. And if uh, it's the same if the rook protects, we have also. So again, uh, the c file and the seventh rank here, plus the king walk by Alekna. And a similar case also happened here in the Aronian's game. The knight e5 takes, he takes e5, rook into c8, d4, king goes to d8, rook a7. Like this move, because with the rook on b7, you cannot use the eighth rank because the knight is there. Rook goes to c4, attacking the pawn on b4, but no problem, just b3. Black play rook c1 because he cannot take on e4, there is rook king 8, and he loses the knight. Bishop is taking away c7 and e7. So rook c1 check, king h2, h6, king g3. Reminiscent of the Alkine game, uh, the Alkine game with the king walk here. Rook c3 check, f3. Rook into c6, h4. c8, h5. Typical in the pawn breakthrough, right? One, two, three. The pawn could not take h5 because the king will just capture all pawn because black is almost in Zhuang. The only piece that the black player can move is the, the, the rook, nothing else. Okay, so rook c6 after h5, king into h4, clearing the line for this pawn. g4, king goes to e8, now f4. Okay, it was interesting here. Now let's take a look at g5 for example. So king g3, he goes, let's say, for example, uh, rook pin, yeah? not allowing f4. Now white has rook to a8. Rook c8 back, takes, takes, and then bishop e7, not allowing f6. And if you push b5, all right, the pawn breaks through. The final execution, final winning plan. Look at this pawn. It takes, it takes. Let's say you push on e4, that's g5. It takes on g5, it is g5. With the bishop protecting f8 and f6, pawn this move all the way to the chain. Right? Okay, so here, king onto e8, f4, d8, takes on g6. It's G5, uh, a very artistic way to finish by Aaron after H5, the final move. The pawn breaks through. Here, back resign. Let's say, for example, he takes a 5, we have E6. Knight goes back to B8. These two pieces, the bishop and the pawn, is nailing the king. And the rook shifts to the king's side, threatening mate. King cannot escape. So it's a checkmate on the back rank. And you capture if you capture with the other pawn, this is unstoppable. Alright, g7 and g8. So that was it. It was a very instructive game, right? Aronian, yeah. Reminiscent also of the game by Fisher against Petrosian in Canada's in 1971, and the game by Alec Klein against Yates in 1922. So we have here the role of the classics. It's also very important to look at classical games for the former world champions. 
and incorporate those ideas into your own games. That's why Aronian is also a very strong player. Because he knows his classics. Okay, so again here the lesson in this game was the occupation of the, set, the, the open file, the invasion of the seventh rank, last but not the least, the pawn breakthrough in the end. All right. Thank you for watching our presentation for the rest day of the PD Grand Prix 2022. And we will continue with our coverage of round number five in the days, in the next day. Okay. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting the Charles Matches channel. This is Coach Oliver signing off. Stay safe, everyone. Bye-bye.